Good evening. How are y'all doing? Uh, my name is Joseph Googie. I'm one of the co-founders of PrePT Grind. Um, and this is another episode of the PrePT Grind chat live. Um, you guys don't see my Black Panther poster behind me. It's because I'm still at my clinic. Um, I have not gone home yet, uh, been grinding, but um, was excited for this. Every single Thursday night, if you are new to this group, if uh, this is the first time that you've joined us, every single Thursday night inside of this pre-doctor of physical therapy students page. Savannah, how are you doing? Uh, Casey and I come in here. Casey and I are the co-founders of Pre-PT Grind. Um, we come in here and we share... Uh, a lot of value um, to you as pre-PTs because our goal is to help you get into PT school without wasting time or money. So uh, tonight's topic is going to be one that, um, as I let Casey... If you are... Jo What's up, Casey? Oh, man, it's like, we, it's like we called each other up, man. Red on red, huh? Hey, that's it. It's the color of the day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. How you feeling? I'm all good. How are you? Yo, I'm doing very well, man. Um, still, still out here, bro, with bands and everything. But, um, but excited for tonight, um, man. First of all, uh, for those of you that have not seen what we're doing, um, we just released our 98th episode of the Pre PT Grind podcast, and we just want to thank you so much for all the support, for listening uh, to our different guests. Um, and the value that they have for you. If you have not listened to the podcast yet, it's a pretty cool one. It's called the Pre-PT Grind Podcast. But uh, because we are getting close to 100 episodes, we are doing a giveaway. We love doing giveaways. Um, and so the details, if you guys uh, go into our Pre-PT Grind uh, business page, so obviously there's the, there's the group on here, or if you see us on Instagram, wherever you follow us, um, go look on there because we have laid out the instructions, pretty much what you have to do. It's three key steps, and then you get to put in, you, you know, you'll be put in the raffle that will essentially um, let you know whether you win or not. And we have a lot of good things for you, but it's a way of us saying thank you for your support uh, over the last few years, really last two years, um, as we've grown that, really, like we literally started like two years ago around this time. Um, and so, so just th throughout that time period, you guys just being there, supporting us, um, and really just growing for yourselves. Um, that in itself has been a blessing. It's been amazing to watch. Um, and, and so, so for you guys, just thank you so much for that. That's our way to show gratitude. For the 200th episode, we'll have something 300th, but right now it's the 100th. So um, if you have not listened to it, go listen to it. It's pretty good. But uh, we do want to have that giveaway. Maria, how are you doing? Uh, but tonight, we want to talk about um, something that we all experience. And I know we've addressed this before, but we want to give you guys some direction, some, so, some clarifying steps. And we shared this on Monday with um, one of the teams that we coach, uh, one of the groups that we coach. And as Casey and I were talking tonight, we we're like, you know what, let's, let's share this tonight, um, these five steps, um, so that the pre-PTs who are listening here are able to uh, get some actionable direction. And the title tonight is Five Steps to Crushing the Feeling of Overwhelm or Burnout. What that generally means is you just feel like things are getting out of hand. You feel like you're probably managing too much. Maybe it's um, taking on classes that are overwhelming you because they're too challenging. Maybe it's um, this process of trying to apply and you're like, I don't know what I have to do. And you're trying to just juggle so much. Um, sometimes it's family added to it. Um, life is life. So, so we can't ignore that. All we can do is make sure that we're able to act accordingly and just help you through it so that you guys can crush it. Our goal is for each and every one of you. If you want to be a PT, for you to get into PT school um, and, and really tear it up from there. That's what we want. So, um, Casey, you cool with if we just go through them? Let's knock it out. Let's knock Let's it out. Let's do it. For those that are on here live, let us know. Say hashtag team live. Let us know that you're here. If you guys are watching on replay, also let us know as well. Um, just so that, like, when you guys comment, it allows other people to, to see the post. It just keeps, you know, blowing it up so that other people can hear the same message. Robin, how you doing? Corey, how you doing, Corey? I'll message you back. I'm still in the clinic, but uh, we got some talking to do. Um, but, but these are the steps. So a lot of us are, are stuck at different points. And, and even for myself and Casey, we do feel burnout. Well, mm, let me re re rephrase that. We do feel overwhelmed. And that overwhelm can lead to the point of feeling burnt out. 
And honestly, this is one of the biggest problems in physical therapy. Because in physical therapy, you guys might be shadowing people that might not necessarily look like they're enjoying what they're doing. Because they might have been in the game for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, sometimes even six months. And you see that they're at a point where they feel like they are being driven into the ground. Um, the joy that they had for PT is no longer there. They were just as excited as you are right now when they were pre-PTs. They were just as eager. They were just as nervous. But at some point down the line, that was slowed down. At some point down the line, somebody pulled that out, pulled that excitement out. Somebody took away everything that he wants. So, what's up, Sean says? How you doing, brother? And so um, for you, we don't want you guys to have to experience that either. Because if you're going to go into physical therapy, we want you to be able to not only enjoy the journey getting there, but also enjoy once you're there. And, 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 and as you continue to push yourself as a physical therapist. So the first one is really simple. One of the, the first step out of the five to really taking control and, and not being overwhelmed is have an intentional structure to your day. Take control of your day. Stop reacting. Casey, how, like, break this down for us, man. Like, how, what are the things that we should be doing to take control of our day? Why is that so important to us as being the first point to overcoming overwhelm? Yeah, I mean, I think you can take this in a lot of different ways. There's, a, there's you know, tons of uh, self-help books. There's tons of blogs. There's tons of YouTube videos on how to properly do this. So you can go a bunch of different ways with this, but at least for me, in order to be able to structure my day, my week, uh, the next few days, whatever I have to do going on, is to first just put it all out there. Just do a brain dump, as I like to call it. Get a sheet of paper, get your OneNote, get your notes on your phone, uh, get a Google Doc, whatever you really like. Do a brain dump and put it all out there first. Yeah. You don't want to leave, get everything out of your head, because most of the time with overwhelm, we're just in our head all day, like, I have to do this, I have to do that. And, and we get tired because our, our brain gets tired from thinking mm. of all that stuff we have to do. So sure. get it all out. Write it down, type it up, um, and that's the first step. The next step is, at least for me, is to, once you have all of those things down on a sheet, cross off what you cannot control. Mm. Like, just take it off the list, write it on a separate sheet of paper and throw it away if you have to. Write down what you cannot control then that might cut your list down 50, 30%, 60%. Then you'd be like, okay, this is what I can actually do. This is what I control, can yep. control. Then from that, I feel much less overwhelmed. And I'm like, man, I can actually tackle this. This is something exactly. I can actually do. So I, I want, I'm not going to give you 10 things to do right now for this step. There's so much out there you can research, but just those two. Just get it all out there. Do a brain dump. Put it down somewhere. Then cross up what you cannot control and focus on what you can. So that's my, my first little tips on this one. I love it. What's up, Danny? How you doing, brother? No, you're 100% correct. And, and there are the different ways you can go about it. But find a way to take control of your day. You, you kind of have to. Um, and, I mean, that, that's what Casey and I have to do every single day. I mean, we're balancing being clinicians, being online coaches for y'all. Um, and doing so many other things. And for us, the way we're able to get to the point where this doesn't get to the point of being this mountain of, of stress is, is, is because we have to take the reins at the very beginning and understanding what we can control and also understanding what we cannot control. Does that make sense? And if you can understand that, then you'll start, I mean, you won't stress about things that are unnecessary to stress about. So we can go into detail on that, but we've, We've addressed that topic a little bit, you know, on a previous live stream. So, so I won't go much deeper than that. Number two, number two, what's up, Trey? How you doing? What's up, Gail? Number two is monitoring your energy and what either adds to it or takes away from it. Now, what do I mean by that? Am I talking about something that's like super abstract? No, no, no. I'm talking about like y'all, y'all ever have days where you're just like, yo, I'm on my ish today. Like, I feel like I have, I'm fueled I, like i'm fueled yo man good to see you Trey, bro um but but you have days where you feel like yo i'm locked in today i feel like i can take over the world yo casey i know you had those days where you like you're knocking things out mm -hmm. you're like, yo i'm good to go like the way you interact with people is very confident very clear you emit a positive energy people can sense that you are on your ish and then you also have days that they are the exact opposite days where you feel drained by the time the moment you wake up, you can't wait to get back in bed. 
the moment you wake up, you're just like, yo, man, I got to get through A. Oh, shoot. Like, everything just feels like a drag. So that's, that's a big difference. So what causes, so, okay, I get it. Like, some days are just nice. But, but, but you have to realize that that's not, that's not just a feeling that just comes and goes. You can actually control that. You can control the, like, how, like, feeling, like, feeling, like, like, my energy level, for example, like, if you guys see me on this live stream, I've been at it since about 6 a.m. my time. Right now, it is 9, what, 9, 18 p.m. Eastern time. I haven't stopped yet, period. Like, from, from the moment I got up, doing a lot of things for Free PT Grind, working 10 hours in the clinic, I'm talking, like, taking care of people. I, I don't have a choice but to control my energy. If I don't control my energy, a lot of people get screwed over. If I don't control my energy, then, then what happens is when I walk into this clinic, when I walk into my clinic, then I'm bringing in so much, like, so much extra stuff that my patients don't even need to have in their lives. They got their own problems. They're coming in to get better. So I have to learn how to control my energy. So, so, so what I had to do really quickly was figure out what adds to it, what takes away from it. Like, literally, I got so detailed to the point where I was like, okay, my rest level, am I sleeping? The, the, the things we talked about in step one, like how you're starting your day, uh, how, what I'm listening to, like what my routine is. Like my routine is the same doggone thing every single day. Like literally, my routine is I wake up in the morning, I'm doing my devotionals, I drink my water, and then I usually go shower. And then while I'm showering, I'm usually listening to a podcast. The podcast is, I mean, not like bumping music or anything, like, like it's too early. Like I'm listening to something that's already getting my mind going. After I finish that, I'm, I'm usually having uh, breakfast while I work on something light, whether it's reading a book, whether it's something else like that. Like, like this morning, I think, I think I, sp I spent about 40 minutes this morning just doing reading for fun because I just need my brain to be going before I walk out the door. And I'm out the door by 7 a.m. But before I do all that, I've already done my personal development podcast wise. I've already read for maybe 30 to 45 minutes. I've already taken care of business pre PT ground wise. I've already, because I know that if I do those things for Joseph, I'm able to control my energy and I'm able to go through my day feeling like, yo, I'm in control. The more you can feel like you're in control of it as a pre PT, the better it gets. Because I know that my responsibility is if I get on a call with somebody, what's up, Samantha? How you doing? Like, if I get on a call with somebody, I need to be on my A game. If I walk into the clinic, I need to be on my A game. So for you, what's that going to be? Do you feel like, do you, do you understand that those, that mountain of overwhelm is actually within your control? Do you realize that, like, how you navigate your energy? Maybe it's the people you're talking to. Maybe it's how you're setting up your day. Like, are you draining yourself before... Before you get to class, are you draining yourself before you get to your job as a PT tech? Are you like, are you letting that control your energy level to the point where by the end of the day, you're just like, yo, I'm so tired. I can't even work on the things that actually matter. Control your energy. Casey, what are your thoughts on that one, man? I mean, shoot, you guys know how it is. I just said earlier, you know how tired you get. And especially when you're a PT, um, it's more draining than you think. Like you can go through the day and you're like, man, I'm good. Then your last patient hits or your last two patients hit, and you're like, man, I'm, I'm kind of tired. Taking care of people is, is draining. If you think you're overwhelmed now, uh, you have to prepare yourself for when you're giving to people constantly 10 hours a day, all, of, all day. So you have to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Yep. Like, don't put yourself on the back burner. That's, that's really all you got. So prioritize your task to serve you, not necessarily to drain you. But like Joseph said, whatever your routine is, like his routine is way better than mine. Shoot, I wake up in the morning, go to the bathroom, drink some water, and I'm out. <laughs> like, I'm out the door. I do so what, whatever your routine is, make sure it serves you. Like, I want to get as much sleep as I can. So I sleep in, <laughs> hit that snooze button. When I wake up, I know exactly what I got to do and run out. That's how I take care of myself. Whatever feeds you, do that. Whatever drains you, don't do that. Let's not make life more complicated than it needs to be. Let's not give this 15 steps when it only needs two. Ooh, Feed whatever you need to get yourself going and take away what's draining you. 
Like simple as that. Simple as that. That's my two cents on this one. Boom. That's it. So number three, understand your boundaries. Know your boundaries. Know your boundaries when it comes to activities. Know your boundaries when it comes to uh, who you're interacting with. I mean, some of y'all might message me tonight and be like, hey, Joseph, can we get on a call tonight? And the honest truth is we're not going to get on a call tonight because we can't. Like, I know what my boundaries are. I have to have them. Your boundaries are what allow you to still take care of yourself. You can't, you can't like, man, one, one thing I had to realize really quickly as a pre-PT is the reason why I became so overwhelmed is because I was trying to say yes to everything. And half the things didn't really matter. They were just things I wanted to do. You have to know what your priorities are and you have to learn how to say no. And I can almost guarantee that most of you don't know how to do that. I'm saying that because that's one of my biggest struggles. I'm a doggone people pleaser. So, so, so it's, really, it's really easy for me to say yes because I'm always ready to help somebody. But the honest truth is you have to have boundaries. Um, one of the people that's helping me understand that the most is my fiance because she's just... Like, she'll, she'll, she'll see me on days where I've just, like, ran myself into the ground, and she's like, mm, you have to learn to say no, Joseph. So I'm telling you all the same thing. You have to know what your boundaries are. Are you aware of them? Are you aware of the fact that you're, what's up, man, man? Like, are you aware of the fact that you might be driving yourself to a position where you're, like, it, it might affect your health? It, it'll affect how you're looking at everything? I mean, think about it. Like, when you feel overwhelmed, can you even think straight? I, I, I sure can't. Now, will you get busy? Yeah. Like, will you have days where it's, like, exhausting? Well, yeah, that's life. But what can you control? Can, can y'all control that? So, so understand what your boundaries are. Understand what they are. Draw them in the sand. The honest truth is, one thing that I, was, that I learned last year is every time – the line was super simple. is that every time you win, you lose. Every time you win, you lose, which means that – Every time I win with someone, I'm losing with somebody else. Right now, I'm on a live stream with Casey and y'all right now. My fiance is actually in the clinic. She's like chilling over here. So because I'm winning with y'all right now, I'm losing with her right now. As in, I could be spending time with her. But I'm on a stream with y'all. Which means that after this, if you're trying to reach out to me, I'm going to be winning with her and losing with you. I can't win at everything all the time. So I have to know what my priorities are and be okay with that. Don't, don't, don't feel like you have to uphold the world. Don't feel like you have to, you know, like be at everybody's beckoning call. Don't feel like this weekend if your homies are trying to hang out, you just have to be there because if you're not, you're going to let them down. Take care of you. Know what your boundaries are. Get your is together and understand that this is about learning how to be efficient. This is about the career and the time and whatever things that are important to you that you're trying to really keep packaged up. But if you don't start training yourself to do that, then the honest truth is it's only a matter of time before you hit a tipping point, whether it's your health, whether it's your sanity, whether it's your approach as a pre-PT, whether it's your desire to even pursue physical therapy, the profession itself might even be intimidating to you if you don't know how to take care of that. So know what that line is. Casey, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, I, I talked about this before. That's what I've been doing when my camera was all around in different places. Uh, it's something called the Eisenhower decision matrix. So I'll put this up here. Hmm. It's a simple box. There's plenty of ways to break up what you need to do or not do what you need to do, find what you need to find. But this is what I found works for me and a lot of people. So make a little box. The first box is going to say do. The second one across on the top is going to say decide. Then down here is going to say delegate. Then it's going to say delete. So on the top, you're going to have urgent. Then next to that, you're going to have not urgent. Then on the sides, you're going to have important. Then under that, you're going to have not important. I know it's probably backwards, but you guys get it. So you're going to have your list that we talked about earlier, and you're going to section it out. Is it urgent? And is it important? If so, you're going to do it now. Don't waste any time. Mm. Do it now. Do it in the next five minutes, whatever. Get it done. Get it off your freaking list. We're talking about overwhelm. One way to not be overwhelmed is to get your stuff done so you don't got to think about it anymore. True. So do it now. Get it uh, crossed off your list. If it's not urgent, 
but it's important, you can decide when to do it. Then you can put that on your schedule, be like tomorrow, prioritize it, all that stuff. Now, if it's urgent and, what is this? Urgent and not important, you can ask for help. You can delegate it to someone else. It can be something as simple as chores, something as big as I need help getting into PT school, pre-PT grind, I'm delegating some help to you, help me get into PT school. It can be like mm. that. And if it is not urgent or not important, delete that shit. Stop being overwhelmed. Like I said, don't make life more complicated than it needs to be. Yep. Delete it. So make this box if you need to. If it helps you, great. If you need something else, find something else. But make a box. Do, decide, then delegate and delete. If you need to, if it's important and urgent, do it now. If it's important but not urgent, decide when to do it. If it's urgent but not important, ask for help. Delegate it. Have someone help you do it. If it's not important and not urgent, don't do it. Delete it. Like Joseph said, take care of yourself. Win with something else and lose with whatever. So that's just a small little exercise. That's something tangible that you guys can take with you. You can do tonight, do right now. But you sometimes we talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of heady things. But with this live stream, this is like actionable stuff you guys can actually do like tonight. So get out a piece of paper, make a Google Doc and do it. Try it. And you'll be, I guarantee you, you'll be way less overwhelmed so that's my little two cents on this next point too i like it a lot i like it a lot um that was number three boundaries number four seek constant guidance from the right people seek constant guidance from the right people who, who are those honestly people that are on the right path i mean that understand the path that you're on people that understand the the areas that are overwhelming you and won't actually add to it Man, dang, Chicago out here, straight, uh, dang, people. You hear that? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> not that, y'all. Listen, <laughs> Chicago living, Chicago living. But, but, but. <laughs> yo, real talk, though. Find guidance from people that actually understand where you're going. Um, if, if this is in regards to th certain things that are more personal, like familial things. Find someone that, like, actually understands that. And either understands it because they're going through it with you or understands it because they've gone through it themselves. Like if it's pre-PT related, shoot, like you can use us. You can, whoever you want to use that can give you that guidance. But whatever it is that's overwhelming you, Casey was just talking about it. It's, it's part of that delegating, but you're literally saying like, who can I have access to? Who can I find right now that would allow me to be like, to, to, to lessen this mountain that is building up this mountain of overwhelm, this mountain that is creating some levels of anxiety, like who are those people? Do you have those people? If you don't, send us a message. Go to contact preptground.com, be like, hey, like I, I need help with you know A, B, C, D, and we'll help you out with that process. But but who is that person for you? Because the honest truth is, even, don't don't generalize it either. It's not just oh these are my families, so that's who it. Is. Well, are they helping you get there? Or are they making it harder for you to get there? If your goal is to be a physical therapist, if your goal is to get into PT school, are they helping you get there? Or are they taking you, or are they making it harder? Making it harder, it comes along like, well, maybe you should choose something else. Making it harder might be, hey, just postpone another year because of this. Making it harder leads to doubt. Making it harder leads to you second thinking, making it harder leads to you. I mean, like it, it, it's, it's an ugly path. So, so if they're holding you back, well, maybe that's not the person. It, are they helping you get there? Are they giving you direction? Are they um, saying less of, you know, how you can't, but more so how to figure it out, whether you have a low GPA, whether you're stuck, whether it's, it's certain things that are familiar that are holding you back, but whatever the obstacle is, are they helping you accomplish the goal that you want, whether it's passing your classes for the semester, whether it's passing your GRE, whatever it is, like, like, are they helping you? And if they are helping you, then that's one of the people you should be reaching out to. But have people that are willing to constantly serve you, take care of you, pour into you, because we all need those individuals in our lives. And that's, that's the four, fourth part. Casey, is there anything you want to add to that before we hit number five? Yeah, what we've learned is like asking for help is kind of like a status thing. 
a lot of times when you're like, you see your other friends getting in or you see people getting into PT school and they don't need help. And you're like, man, I, I don't want to ask for help. That's just going to mean I'm stupid. I already have a 3.2 GPA. I already have a 2.96. I'm already mm. not getting over a 300 on the GRE. I'm already stupid. They already think that. If I ask for help, they're just going to think I'm more stupid and make more fun of me. Mm. So that's going to just lower how people see me in their eyes if I ask for help and try to get help. But at the same time, everybody gets it. Like your patients, you're getting into this profession because people need help from you. Yeah. Don't think that asking or delegating or reaching out for someone's guidance is lowering you or making you more stupid in the eyes of other people. Because the most successful people are getting help from others. Mercy. Like we pay, <laughs> we pay a good amount of money every month to get help with our business. We have mentorship programs for us as yeah. clinicians. We pay like, yeah, a good amount of money. Like, come like on four now. Four figures a month. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, this is not, like, don't be so cocky about yourself. Like, don't hold your, like, like we're not that great to not ask for help. Right? Mm. And don't think you're too good to ask for it either. <laughs> now, Say that again, Casey. Say we're not again, too bro. great to ask for help. Don't think yeah. you're too great to ask for it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, True. just make life, this whole live stream, we've been talking about making life easy for yourself. Yep. Like, why struggle? Mm. Why have this overwhelm? Why have this burnout? Why tear yourself down? If we can get help, shoot, we're getting help. And that's why we're where we are right now. As yep. clinicians, as business owners, shoot, if I could have got help like this as a pre-PT, you'll hear so done. many people. Right. Done. You hear so many people say that, man, I wish I had this. And if you have that option, and it works for you. Now, if you can do it on your own, whatever, fine. There's plenty of things out there. But if you're like, man, I don't want to go through this struggle. I don't want to be burnt out. I don't want to be overwhelmed. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to do this by myself. I don't want to hate physical therapy. I don't want to waste $75,000 to $100,000 on wasted income in the year. I don't want to be in more debt than ask for help. Seek guidance. Delegate that task to someone who knows what they're doing, and your life will be so much easier. You'll take a deep breath. You'll have less stress. You'll be more excited about the profession. You, you'll be more fired up. You'll be oh, a yeah. better applicant oh, <laughs> because you're not burnt out and overwhelmed. Yes, sir. So ask for help. Don't be so, what is it, Kendrick, uh, Kendrick Lamar's song, like, be humble about it. Like, and they will see that. People are mm. attracted to that. Mm. So, like, man, make life easy for yourself. Delegate it. Ask for help if needed. And you're not less of a person if you do need help or you do seek guidance or you want someone to guide you, you're not less of a person. So do it if you need it. Ain't that the truth. If y'all took anything from tonight's call, that was it. Take that right there. The last thing is study yourself. That's step number five. You have to know yourself. Um, we spend so much time, especially as pre pt we spend so much time looking at what everybody else is doing. Um, and I think it's one of the biggest mistakes pre-PTs make. Like, I think it has some positives. Like, if you're around the right people, they can inspire you and motivate you to grind and, you know, stay on your game. But I honestly think we're, we're spending so much time looking over our shoulders that we never really know what we have to provide. Um, and it actually lowers your self-confidence as an applicant. It lowers your, um, your, your, your self-belief. And you really don't – like, it, it's like a teenager that's trying to figure out what their best – what their style is and all they're doing is mimicking what all their friends are doing. They, they have no idea what they're really about. They, they have no idea what statement they want to make to the world. They, they have no idea who they really are. Like, right. Like real talk. Like I can guarantee you that there there's, I don't know what the numbers are. I haven't done the studies, but there are a chunk of teenagers. Like what we, we act like teenagers too, but, but there are a chunk of teenagers that, that go through those years, never identifying who they really are. There are, a number of people in their 20s never identifying who they really are. There are a number of people in their 30s, 40s, 50s. We got people in their 60s that are just learning who they are. So are, are you studying yourself? All, all the other four that we said above deal with you identifying what you need, with you identifying what you need personally, with you identifying where you are as an individual, as an applicant, as a person, what makes you tick? What ter like? What what are those things? Like what your situation is? What your environment is like? Like what do you need? Are you studying yourself? Are you? Because the moment you understand what you bring to the table, 
the moment you understand who you are as an applicant is the moment where we can be real. Is the moment where we can be real and understand what we need to do to get you across the finish line. It's the moment where we can be real, but also very confident in what you have to bring to the table rather than focusing so much on what everybody else got. It's the moment we can really authentically go into this application cycle knowing that we have done everything in our power to absolutely set ourselves up for success. But really, it's how life works. It's not just for PT school. It's just life. So, so do you understand what you bring to the table? Casey, any of your thoughts on that, bro? No, man, you pretty much hit that one. Like, don't lie to yourself. It's easier said than done. Uh, it does take practice. Uh, it does take, you know, a few hard nights. But, hey, you can't move on if you're not eventually knowing where you start. Like, if you don't know where you stand, if you don't know where you're at right now, realistically, uh, then the future is just so much harder. So just be real with yourself, and you can move much faster. Um, speed, speed wins, but it's one of many components that do. So if you can tackle that one and get to it faster by knowing where you are right now, it'll make life easier. Exactly. I love it. So, so I'll summarize our points from tonight. So title being five steps to crushing the feeling of overwhelm and not burning out. Number one was intentional structure to your day. Stop reacting. Take control from the beginning. Number two, monitor your energy and what either adds to it or takes away from it. Number three, understand boundaries. Know your boundaries. Set them up and live by them. Number four, seek constant guidance. And number five, know yourself. Know yourself. That's it. That's all we got tonight. I hope that was of value to you. If it was of value to you, uh, please comment value whether you're watching this live or replay um, because this is the game we're playing, y'all. Like, I get it. Like, it's it's easy to listen to a live stream where it's just hyping you up and making you feel good. But the, the honest truth is, like, we're in this game to help y'all really win it. This is not some pseudo group where we're just trying to do videos just for the hell of it. Listen, like, it's 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 almost 10 p.m. and we're grown men with jobs. Like, I haven't even like, ate yet. Like, with, with, with let's go. And we out here, you know, I mean, come on. Like, we do this because we love serving y'all. We do this because we love serving you. We ain't stopping. Like, we're about to be here with gray hairs, you know, in a few decades, still serving pre-PTs because we love the profession. But we also know that y'all have been put in positions where a lot of people around you are not giving you what you need to actually excel as pre-PTs. And that's why so many people pull the plug. So we're going to be real with you. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that it happens. So that when y'all go at this, you guys are able to obtain the dream that you guys set out to achieve, which is becoming doctors of physical therapy. And we cannot wait. For y'all that have already been accepted into PT school, welcome to the profession. And the rest of you, we cannot wait to welcome you into this amazing profession. We really cannot. But you're going to have to learn how to handle your overwhelm. Um, and it's, it's not going to go away. It's just no, knowing how to handle it. It's knowing how to control it. And that's what we wanted to share with you tonight. And if you missed it, if you just joined us, this is one that you're going to want to watch, you know, on replay um, again, just because we really did share the five key steps to really taking control of that. Um, but, but, but that's it. If you guys have any questions, send us a message. Go to contactpreptgrind.com. Uh, send us a message. Let's talk starting tonight. Um, let's start putting you on, on the right path to taking control of the pre-PT so y'all can crush it. Podcast giveaway. So, Podcast giveaway. Yo, guys, we are at 98 episodes for our podcast. Make sure to listen to the podcast. Over the next two weeks, we are building up towards a podcast giveaway. Uh, go to the Pre-PT Grind Facebook page. Go to our Instagram page. The instructions are there as to what you need to do um, to pretty much set yourself up to, to, to be part of our giveaway. Uh, but at episode 100, we are giving a, a three, three giveaways. And so if you guys want to be entered into that raffle, uh, you guys just do those three easy steps um, and, then, and then you guys will be set up to be part of, um, part of it. But we're excited for it. We can't wait to serve y'all. If you guys have people that have not been part of the pre-doctor physical therapy students page, people that have not followed pre-PT ground, listen, we're trying, this is the biggest pre-PT platform in the world. We're trying to literally take what it is right now and like 15 exit. The amount of pre-PTs we're serving, 15 exit. Because the honest truth is, this is more than just us doing live streams. We're trying to save a lot of pre-PTs from making the worst mistake of their career. 
which is quitting on themselves. And if they can't find it anywhere else, because really I haven't seen anywhere else where they can, you know, get that level of direct, well, bring them here. Bring them around you. Bring them around this community. Let's help them. Let's help you get into PT school. That's what we're about. That's what we're here to do. Helping you get into PT school without wasting time or money. But all in all, we'll see you guys next week on the next episode of the Pre-PT Chat Live. Y'all have a blessed one. Have a great rest of your evening. We'll talk. Have a good one. Bye.